Welcome to Let's Calculate Something. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're not going to spend time on a whiteboard doing equations. We're going to talk about 3D printing and some technology that's going to bring your 3D printer from the Stone Ages to the modern time. Um, this is going to save you an incredible amount of time and make your 3D printing experience so much better. You'll see so many people get frustrated early with 3D printing. If they had this technology, people would get so much more done and so much more enjoyment. That's what we're going to help you with today. So what we're going to talk about is how we can take a Raspberry Pi, use OctoPrint, connect to your printer, and be able to do fantastic things with your printer. First of all, we're going to be able to level it. Every problem with 3D printing is almost always has something to do with leveling. We're going to get that 3D printer level beyond anything you could imagine trying to do with the videos that recommend using paper and everything else. So stay to the end and we'll show you that. Um, and then we're going to take you through what you need to purchase to get this up and running. Okay. First of all, you need a Raspberry Pi. Um, we, you could use a three, a three B plus, or a four. We found the most value with the three B plus, and that's what's here. Uh, and there's links below. You could go shop around and find it. This link works pretty good. Um, good price, good availability, easy to do. Then you're going to need to power this and get some memory for it. So let's start with the memory. We get a Lexar 32 gig card. We use a 32 gig card. You could use less if you want. If you don't plan on taking video and all that, um, you could use less. But for a couple bucks, it makes sense just to get a 32 gig. That's the best one. Fits with this, no problem. And then you can do the video, the time lapse, and everything else that I'll talk about. And then you could buy all these different things separately. You're going to need a power supply. This one has a switch. You're going to need a fan to keep your Raspberry Pi cool. You're going to want some heat sinks because there's three chips on here that get a little hot. The heat sinks will help you. And you need a case for your Raspberry Pi with access to every port that the Raspberry Pi has. And you could buy all this separately, and no problem. But the best value is to buy it as a kit. It comes in this box. Everything you need and all the instructions right there. Super easy. Super great. All the links for all the stuff is in the in the video description below. Um, click on the link. It'll help the channel out a little bit if you buy from us or buy through the links rather, uh, which, which will be great. Now we're going to take you through how to get all this set up and running, but we're going to do it in, in, a, in a quick way. We're going to cut out all the fluff and in about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, you're going to be up and running with your printer connected to Octoprint, connected to your phone and doing fabulous things and you're going to level your bed better than you've ever dreamed of. Okay, welcome back. We're about ready to install OctoPi, which is the operating system that OctoPrint works on. We're about ready to install that on our Raspberry Pi. We have the Raspberry Pi here. I installed a couple of heat, heat sinks from the kit. I didn't install the one on the bottom. We'll do that later. I just didn't want to make this um, unbalanced, so it'll be nice and flat on the surface here. We have our memory card, and I wanted to mention that the memory card we chose has an A1 rating. And that A1 rating is right here on the uh, on the package, and that's going to be what you what you want to have for for your uh, for the for the quality of your card. And then we have our adapter. So first thing is we're going to plug this into our computer, and then we're going to download what we need from um, from the Raspberry Pi site. So once that's in, we should hear a little ding. And I want to mention that. Make sure you get this Raspberry Pi installation directly from raspberrypi.com slash software. You can get other ones that have been made by folks uh, that claim that they're, you know, modified and ready to go. You don't want that. You want to start from a bare metal installation, if you will, directly from a trusted source like raspberrypi.com. Make sure that's the case. You don't want any hackers on your network. You don't want anybody to be able to come in later through some backdoor settings they put on there and, and burn up your printer. Um, that would be terrible and you know obviously don't want that. So we're going to scroll down on this site. We're going to look for our operating system that we have on our PC. I have Windows, so I'm going to click Download for Windows. You'll see an imager come up. You'll download that, and then you'll want to execute the imager. And we'll give it permission to go into our system. And then um, what you're going to want to do is uh, install. And so we're going to run it. 
we're going to get this. So we're going to choose our operating system that we want to install on the Pi. And for that, we are going to go to Other Specific Purpose Operating Systems. We're going to go to the 3D Printing section. And we're going to put in Octopi. And we're going to select Octopi. So we have that. And that's a stable version. They come out with new versions sometimes and they claim that they're unstable. You don't want one of those. You want to make sure you choose a stable one. You're going to pick your storage device, and that's our SD card. Remember, it's 32 gigs, so that's the one we have. And then before we write, we're going to go to these settings. And so we're going to change a host name. We're going to set it. And I like, I don't like Raspberry Pi Local because I have another one that's that I'm using. So I'm going to change that to um, Octo Pi local. I want to enable SSH because and, and password authentication. This will let us go in and work from the command line and, and make some changes, which we're going to need to do for the camera later. Um, you want to change this default username and password. So for this one, I'm going to call it let's calculate let's calculate that'll be the name and then you have to add a password and then you want to configure your LAN I had this in there uh, before do it a hidden ah, we will just leave that exposed that's okay um, and then um, we don't want to show the password so for this video you can show it if you need it then you need to change your country and this is a pain to scroll down actually uh, let's see if I can page down quickly. Oop, I don't want that one. No, I can't. I can use the arrow key. Use the arrow key and you can go pretty quick. Uh, we got to go to US for me. A lot of countries here. Takes a second. All right, we got US. My time zone is central, so I'll pick Chicago. Um, the keyboard layout is US. And then um, I'm going to take the telemetry off. I'll eject media when finished and we'll play the sound. I'm going to save those settings and then I'm going to write. Um, and it's going to tell you all existing data will be erased. Are you sure you want to continue? And we do. And so it's going to write. It's going to take a few. And at this point now we want to take the card. We want to install it in the Raspberry Pi. Then we want to take our power supply and we want to connect it right here. It needs a little converter. This has the C type and this has the standard type. So we have to make sure we've got it the right way. And here it is. It is correct. We'll just think you want to ground yourself a little bit before you handle your Pi. And now we see that the lights are coming on and it is, it is booting up, which is great. Give it a second here to boot up. Since it's the first time it's booting up, it takes a little bit longer. While we wait for it to boot up, I'll tell you about some of the some of the parts of this. So you have your HDMI here. So if you want to connect this to a video, you can. This is a connection for your camera, and we'll we'll use that um, later. Here's another connection for a display. This is your camera in, another display if you had a panel. This is your audio connection. Then over here you have your internet connection. And then you have four USB connections. Then you have all these pins here. And these pins can work as I.O. And they can also, they're called um, GPIO. And they also can work, we're going to use these later to hook up our fan. There's a couple of pins here in the instructions that we got um, to hook up this fan. We're going to actually connect this directly to some of these pins, and that's going to power our fan. There's a 3 and a 5 volt on those pins. Okay, so now that this is all powered up, and I think it's uh, probably okay, we're going to go into um, Octopi, and we're going to try to connect to this wirelessly. So that'll be the next step. Okay, so our Raspberry Pi is booted up with Octoprint, and now we're going to go through this tutorial here to 
walk through um, walk through all the setup that's necessary. So to get to this, what we did is open up a new window and we type in octopi.local. If you recall, that's what we put into our in the name of our server. And so we're just going to start and go through this wizard, and it's pretty easy. So uh, we're going to hit next here, and then. Do we want to restore from backup? We don't. Um, we're going to, this is a fresh install. Um, I've typed this in already, and this is the name of my, my username for this one. I've got my passwords in there. We're going to create the account, and we're going to hit next. And then you have a mandatory step. You have to fill this out. Um, we're going to have a host name. Um, this is for internet connectivity. And um, we're just going to use Google's uh, DNS server to get this set up. And then everything is enabled and ready to go. So we're going to hit next. And then um, we're, we're just going to disable. Um, we're going to disable uh, anonymous tracking. I don't need anybody tracking what I'm doing with my Pi. So that's my choice. Um, and then we're going to hit next. And then um, we're going to disable the blacklist processing. We don't really need that right now uh, for this tutorial. You could read on it and change it if you want to. Um, and then our printer po profile, we want to name our printer. And we have an Ender S1 Pro. And we'll use that at unique identifier. Um, and the so it's an ender we'll put s1 pro here too okay hit next and there's some warnings here you never want to leave your printer running completely unattended so even though we can remotely monitor the printer they don't recommend you do it but it's nice to do from within your house um, and so we're ready to go and we're just going to finish. Okay, so we have um, we have this all connected. Um, I don't have it physically connected to the printer yet, um, but it is connected to, um, it is running, okay? So we are now up and up and ready to go. And now what we need to do is connect the, the Raspberry Pi to the printer. And so let me go do that and we'll show you how we've got that set up in a second. What we have here is we have our printer, which is over here. This is our Ender S1 Pro. I have it connected with the USB cable, USB-C to the printer, then uh, out of the one of the USB ports on the Pi. We got our fan installed, which I'll go over in a minute. This is our case that we purchased with our kit. And it comes with a ribbon cable for a camera, which I installed. But I don't have the camera set up. That's going to be another video that we do. Um, and then I have the power switch, which is fixed to the um, to the to the to the uh, table, and that's all ready to go. So now all we have to do is power this on. You can see the pan, the fan that's fired up. You can see the LEDs are illuminated, and it's going. Let me come over here, and we just power up the. Uh, power up the printer and we should be good to go and then uh, what we can do is go back onto the, our, our, our um, web browser and we'll be able to see the printer uh, fired up and we'll it, be able to control it with Octopi. Okay we're back um, and so what we now have to do is log into our Octopi And we're logged in, and and so now we can see we can see everything. So we're connected. Um, one thing we're going to want to do is go in and configure. I have some things already set up on here, so we'll ignore those. Well, we want to go in and configure a few things about our printer. And so the way we're going to do that is to come up to this wrench here. And we're going to talk, we're going to go to the printer profiles. This is the printer and we're going to edit the profile. So this is the name of the printer. I changed a few things, 
This is the um, print bed and build volume. This is for our particular printer. You get this off of your um, off your printer specifications. Our Ender 3 Pro, uh, Ender 3 S1 Pro is a 220, 220 by 270. So you want to put that in. Want to make sure you got your axes set up. We use the default. And then on your hot end, you want to make sure you tell it your nozzle diameter. Mars came with 0.4 millimeters. That's what we're using. Make sure you put in the number of extruders. It's super important. We have one extruder. If you put two or zero, it'll give you trouble. And then we use the default extrusion length and we confirmed it. And so um, we, are, we are good to go. That's all set up. And then if you want to go down and load on the plugins, you can see what plugins came with Octoprint. And then you can load uh, various plugins. We're going to talk about that in a future video. You can get more. Uh, I'm just going to show you just what's available there. What's available. This Print Time Genius is really good. That's one that's going to give you much more accurate print times uh, estimation for when you're going to be finished. Octo Everywhere will let you use this for, from your phone. This is a, a great one too. Um, there's a couple of other options which we'll talk about. But I just want to scroll through all the different op apps that are available for Octoprint. Um, it, it's amazing how much is out there, right? I mean, I'm scrolling and scrolling. I'm not reading any of them. I'm just going through them just to show you that there's there. Now, there's a lot of them that are valuable. Uh, and there's some that are just not really that useful. But we will um, definitely go into some of these in future videos. Okay, so that's it. We've got everything installed. We've got our profile um, we can literally control our printer from here. I don't have the webcam loaded up yet. We will do that in another video. Um, but we can literally control our printer from right here. Um, and then over here we can upload some of our files. And you could start prints just by hitting this button from your PC. You don't have to sneak your net over and be in the Stone Age with your, with your thing. Uh, with your card going back and forth to the printer. You can do it all from here. It's awesome. You can see the G-code. Um, you can do terminal, you can e edit commands in here. We'll do this later in a video for, for uh, printing. And then once you have your camera, you can actually set up some time lapses. Um, and you can see those here. And then there's this Octolapse, which is an app and an add-in that we'll use for later. So that's it. You got your printer set up. It was really easy. Took about a half an hour. Um, and we're up and running with Octoprint. And now we can get into all kinds of interesting things. Um, like for example, the bed visualizer, this shows you the level that how level your bed is. And you can see it's phenomenally level for us. There's a little bit of warping, but we're talking, uh, tenths of a millimeter here. And we'll talk about how to get that, uh, going. And these are some of the benefits that you have with, um, with, with Octoprint. So, so now I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to put the case together and install the fan. Um, what we have here are the instructions, and they, they're pretty good to actually show you some of the things. The key is the orientation of all this stuff, um, and, you know, picking which fan speed you want. Okay, so there's, there's really two leads coming off the fan, a black lead and a red lead. The black lead is negative, the, the red lead is positive. On our Raspberry Pi, this is a 3B+. Plus. Um, on this Pi... The, the third pin is the ground pin or the negative. And then depending on which voltage you want, you use the first pin for 3.3 volts and the second pin for 5 volts. And we're talking about these pins here on the outside of the Pi as you, you, you're going from the corner. So you see the corner here. This is that corner there. So pick your, pick your pins and you'll be able to do that. What I did... And I recommend going with 5 volts because why not get maximum cooling? I installed the Pi. Make sure your sticker is on the inside, on the down. And then you want to make sure that this is going to line up nice. You've got your video, uh, your camera port here, and your other video port here. Um, make sure those are aligned. Bring the fan in from the bottom. And then align this so you can get all your pins exposed and have that. Okay, so we'll set that aside. And now what we do is we take all these layers from our kit and we drop them in and you orient them nicely. And they'll, they'll, they, the, the instructions are really good if you get them out of order. 
um, and then try to keep everything lined up and that's good. Um, we don't really need this powered up right now so I'm going to disconnect the power to make it easier to move around and then you you have that then you plug in your your pi I like to start with the negative I plug in that to the third pin like we said use a pen or something to push it down okay that's done I'm going to go to the second pin for the for the power so I got that there now I'm going to push that down okay it's installed route your wires a little bit over and away from the fan drop that on then grab your screws now the screws I mounted the fan prior they didn't want you to spend time watching me mount a fan pretty straightforward just as long as you get it oriented right the the nuts for both the fan and the case bolts are uh, exactly the same so don't worry about mixing them up they're fine and they give you some extras and then you get that base on so look we got the first one in and then just screw this on I used a six millimeter socket just turn it on and you can you can hold it with your finger you don't have to make it crazy tight and then every one gets a little bit easier after that to get through and it's again it's just a matter of lining it up um, it's a little tricky to get it lined up but it'll, it'll go um, you just have to be patient okay and so we'll get that lined up I guess we'll get it lined up maybe maybe not let's see what's happening here there we go that's the hardest part is getting this lined up once you get it it's pretty good let's pick another corner and just work it in there we go got that one now the rest of them will be very easy so I'm not going to make you spend time watching me do all four. Once you're done with that, you can put your, your little feet on here. And then in the meantime, let's plug our power supply in and switch it on and make sure the fan is running. And it is. So we're all installed. It's good. Just have to get those last couple of bolts and nuts put together. And you've got uh, your Raspberry Pi encased. You've got it set up with a nice cooling fan and you're um you're good to go you're going to be doing all kinds of cool stuff with octopi octoprint you can call it either one and um the next couple videos we're going to do are going to be about the camera which we skipped today and then also we're going to spend some time on bed leveling which are two of the most critical things uh, you can have with uh with with 3d printing um what I'd like to do is ask you to please subscribe to our channel. Uh, we're going to have a lot more videos, a lot of prints that we're going to do. We have a lot of, we have a lot, if you're interested in math, we have tons of math videos. Um, and if you could like this video, if you got something out of it, that'd be helpful too. Give us some feedback in the comments and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.